Hello crafters, today I'm back with another video for Chibitronics. This time we have cooperation with Lawnfawn. This is why I'm using my Lawnfawn stamps today. We are not only having a cooperation with Lawnfawn, but we have also a giveaway running. We will spend a $30 gift certificate from Lawnfawn and a Chibitronic starter kit that is valued for $30 also to two lucky randomly chosen winners. The only thing you have to do is to comment on each blog. So the more you visit and comment, the better your choices are. As I started being part of the Chibitronic design team, I wanted to challenge myself in card making and also bringing interactive cards to another level. This time I want to create a card in the box that lightens up. But first things first, I started with stamping my images on white paper. I used Memento Tuxedo Black Ink and Whisper White Paper from Stamping Up because I want to use my Copic markers today. All the markers I'm using are listed below in case you want to choose the same color combinations. To color my planets, I used some strokes just to give them more texture. When I'm coloring with my Copic markers, I always start with my lightest color, then go in with my medium color and then with my darkest color. But it always depends on the color combinations I'm using. Sometimes I just start with my lightest color, then go in with my darkest color, go in with my medium color and finally with my lightest color again. I super sped this video up because this video isn't about coloring my images, but there are lots of people who like watching coloring, so this is why I left this part in. After coloring all the images, I just posi cut it out, so you won't see that part because it's is very boring. I used the out of this world stamp set from Lawn Fawn because I wanted to create a space themed interactive card. Now I need a galaxy background for all my pieces for the box and I'm using peacock feathers, wilted violet, blueprint sketch, distress inks to create my background. As this card contains two big um, interactive parts, first the box and second the lightning system. I decided to focus just on the lightning system and make another video for the card. So in case you are interested in how exactly I did this card, you can find another video on my YouTube channel as soon as I am finished. But Lawnfawn has also great dies to make this card in a box, so it is easier for you and you don't need to measure anything, just die cut it and piece this card together. Now that my panel is full of distress inks, I want to create some stars. Herefor I use my Gansai Tami watercolors. I picked up the color silver and the white one and just splattered it all over my panel. For this technique I like to use my clear acrylic blocks and use the edges of them so it is easier for me to get the splatters. But you can also just tap on your brush and the paint will fall off or you can also use a toothbrush. After finishing my panels I just set it aside to dry. After the panels has been dried, I just now want to figure out how I want to put my card together. I started with my panel that later will be the back part of my box. This will be also the part in where I want to put my LEDs. I let this part of the video in just that you can see how I made it, but at the end I thought it was really complicated. While editing this video I thought it would have been enough to lay down my planets just to know where I want them to be and then die cut some circles and also die cut the circles from fun form so just the planets would lighten up. Now let's start with the technical part of this card. Here you can see my card panel for my box and you can also see the three axes and where I marked where my LEDs will be later. I closed this box one time so I can see where I want my battery to be and after this I draw in the battery and now I start to connect everything. When I connect everything before with my pencil, I can figure out if it works or not. And as you can see, I just have to erase sometimes my lines and correct them. If I would have started directly with my copper tape, I had to throw everything away and start all over again. Now that everything is drawn in, I just need 
to put my copper tape on my panel. For the edges I just bend it forth and back and, and get good lines without tearing my copper tape. I don't like to cut my copper tape before I start putting it on my panel because I never know how long I need this copper tape. You always want to make sure that your copper tape is one piece. Otherwise you would risk to get the bad connection between the battery and the LEDs and maybe the LEDs won't work. This little flap of paper that you are seeing will later be my switch to get my lights on and off. After finishing the circuit we just have to apply our LEDs and with the LED lightning system this is the easiest part of this card. With my bone folder I just press the LEDs really hard on the copper tape so the connection will be really good later. And now you can see my system is working. My battery is on the front flap of the box card. I don't want later that people can see my battery, this is why I want to glue a galaxy background over it. To gluing a background over the battery I just need some fun foam to get the same height as the battery. I double layered my fun foam because I thought it would be enough, but later you will see that I'm gluing a third layer of fun foam on top of the other layers. My sentiment will be also on the front lap of the box card. I decided to white heat emboss the sentiment and before I stamped with Versamark ink I made sure that my background was really dry. Otherwise the embossing powder would stick on the wet paper and I wouldn't get a crisp sentiment. As I already mentioned I adhered my third layer and my galaxy panel on top of the double sided adhesive. To adhere the fun form on the back of my galaxy background I'm using my ATG gun from Scott. I think you don't really need to adhere fun form between the back of the box and the galaxy background, but I wanted that just the planets would light up. At the end result you can see that it worked and the work was really worth it. To glue my planets on top of the background I just used some multi matte medium from Ranger because I was afraid that the glue would go out of the sides and glue to everywhere. This glue dries matte and nobody will ever see that something went out. To put the box card together we need to glue the flaps in the middle of the box. You put glue just to one side and adhere it on top of the copper tape. But don't be afraid to destroy something. I promise it won't be destroyed and it will work at the end. I'm a bit out of focus. In case you are interested in this part, please visit my other video. In this I stayed in focus and you can see better what I did. I'm really sorry for this. When all the flaps are adhered to the box, you now put glue to the other flap side. And then just put the card together as you would normally put the card together. And you can see everything is working at this point. Now are just the colored images missing. And to adhere them I use some stripes of acetate and now I'm using my little astronaut to glue on top of the battery so he is like lightening up the planet. To glue down all my images I like to use my ATG gun because I don't really like liquid adhesive. Just for the tiniest planet I'm using my multi matte medium from Ranger. I adhered all the floating images on top of the acetate and now I'm just arranging them in the box. All the images are adhered now on the box and my card is all finished. I really hope you enjoyed my idea of a lightning box card and I hope I could help you making your own. Please don't forget to head over to my blog to find all the information about the giveaway. Here you can find some more projects using Lawnfon and Chibitronic products. You will find my little profile also in case you want to follow me and see more card making projects. And until the next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.